Welcome to this Wisel tutorial on Power Apps. In this part of the series, we'll be looking at connecting to data and creating a data table. As part of this, we will cover connecting to a OneDrive file, creating a table control, viewing the available properties within that control, applying a filter directly to the data source, and finally, also using the sort function on the data source. Let's get started. Let's create a new app. New app, start with page design, blank canvas, tablet is fine. Welcome to Power App Studio. Do I want to create a form or a gallery? I don't. Don't show me this again. All right, first thing we'll need then is to connect to our data. Go to the top left hand corner of the screen, click on the little Microsoft waffle and choose OneDrive. In the top left, click on Create or Upload, File Upload, go into your Power Apps folder and choose Movies 2021 separate. Switch back to Power Apps, come over to the left hand side, below Tree View we've got Insert and beneath that we've got Data. Click on Add Data. In the search box, look for OneDrive. If you're using a business account, make sure you choose OneDrive for business or you'll get a strange error message. Click on Add a Connection. On the right hand side, choose Connect. And from here, it will list out all of the documents or folders that we can connect to. Well, there's only one for us, Movies 2021. This will show us all the tables that are available inside of your file. For this example, I'd like to go for the actors and then choose connect. On the left hand side, you'll see your data source has now been added. To insert your table, go to insert. And as always, you can type in the search box to find what we're looking for. Under layout, we've got data table. Interestingly, it says it's in preview and it has since the very inception of Power Apps. Let's open up the data table. From here to connect to your data, when clicked on the visual that is not currently connected to data, this pop-up will show you all of the data sources you currently have. Alternatively, you can go to the right hand side, data source, and again, choose from your available data sources. This has automatically popped some fields into my data. We have some unnecessary duplication of information. In the data source, we have the first name and family name as separate columns, but we also have this field where it combines the two. In the properties pane, beneath your data source, you'll see it says fields and eight selected. Click on there. To remove fields that you don't need, hover next to the field, click on the three dots and choose remove. I'm going to remove the first name and then I'm going to remove the family name. I'll also remove the Wikipedia URL. In the top right of the data, Use the X to close it down and then stretch your table till it comfortably fits. The formatting of the data table comes in two main sections, the table itself and the columns. If you look over on the left hand side and click on to tree view, you'll see we have the data table as an object and if you expand it, each of our columns as an object. So I can select the entire data table or select individual columns. With the column selected, if I look over on the right hand side, I have the width, whether the column is visible, can it grow as more data is added, header text, and if it's a hyperlink. Let's change our header text to actor name. 
This has not affected the data source, it's only affecting our table control. If you go to advanced, we've got additional actions, which we normally control from inside of our dropdown in the top left hand corner. One that could be useful is the is hyperlink. Come down in tree view and click on your image URL. Switch back to display. And toggle is hyperlink on. Come over to your image URL, hold alt, click, and nothing happens. This is hyperlink has formatted the column to look like a hyperlink and react when our mouse hovers over the top. But what it's not doing is triggering the action we want. With your image URL column selected, go up to the top left, use the drop down, change it from text to on select. And what we'll do is use the launch function. We need the name of our control, data table one. And we need to tell which row, specifically which column has been clicked on, dot. And we've got a property selected. That holds the current record, a row with multiple columns. And so we want to pull that in. However, we don't need a record. We don't need multiple columns. So we're going to say dot and it lists out all of the available columns, including the ones in our data source that we aren't currently displaying. So I could choose Wikipedia URL. That's not what I want though. Let's grab the image URL. Close your bracket. Come down to your images, hold Alt, and click on your image. What a nice picture of Andy Serkis. Goodbye, Gollum. From here, the other options are limited. We've got auto width, content language, field display name, order, text, visible, width. What we don't have is things like the row color. If you want to change the background of your visual, you click on your data table itself. And from here, we have our color for our text and our fill for our background. If you come down to selected fill, that'd be the color of our row, currently showing up as this blue color. I'm going to change that. Type in color and choose whichever color you want. I'm going with blanched almond. Currently, I'm showing all of the actors. I would like to change this to only show actors who have an image URL. To do this, click on your data table, use the drop down on selected fill, and choose items. This is your data source, the actors table that we pulled from our Excel document in OneDrive. Come up to your actors. And I want to apply a filter directly onto the data source. Filter, your data source, actors, comma. One habit to get into when you're using a function is to add the comma and resist the temptation to add the space. Right now, it's showing me all of the items it thinks are most relevant, but it's very easy to accidentally push space and lose that list. If you lose it, delete the space and do control space. Or delete the comma entirely and put the comma back in and your list should return. There are now two ways that we can refer to the column in the data source we want to filter. We can, of course, just straight up choose the column itself. Or if you want to refer to the entire row, this record. So that's a row made up of multiple columns. If I want to see the individual columns inside of this record, I can say dot and I can choose what I'd like to filter. In this case, image URL. I'm going to use a not 
a greater than and a less than facing each other. And I'm going to say this is not null. Close your bracket. And that will have removed all of those empty rows. If I want to add a second filter, I can go up to filter again, comma, date of birth equals null. This time I get an error message. Incompatible types for comparison. These data types can't be compared. Date, time, and text. So this column, date of birth, has been brought through as a date, time, data type. So instead of saying equals null, we see equals blank. Blank is a function, and so it requires a set of brackets. Close one more bracket for the filter function. Hmm, all of our actors have been given dates of birth. So let's change this from equals to not. We could use the greater than, less than, but there's also a function that you can use. I'm going to wrap the entire question inside of the not function. Open a bracket and at the very end, close another bracket. The not function will change our rows from returning true to false. So on each row, it checked if the date of birth was equal to blank. And if it was blank, it returned true. But we wanted to reverse this. We wanted the blank rows to return false so they'd be hidden and the non-blank rows to return. So this is swapped our question around so that we're showing all of the rows that are not equal to blank. The final thing that I'd like to do is I would like to change the sort order. Come over to the left hand side and outside of the filter function we're going to say sort. We're going to pass the whole thing in as our data source, comma. And what do we want to sort on? I'll sort on the date of birth, comma. And I want the sort order descending. Close your bracket. And that will sort the data before it goes into our table. Thank you for watching this WiseL tutorial. In the next episode, we'll have a look at working with galleries, the main way to show data in Power Apps. See you in the next one.